Hi everyone. Whew. Just did a 45 minute run that I didn't want to do. I wanted to lay home. Lay home. I wanted to lay in bed and have an avocado egg sandwich on gluten free bread. But I've been going through a little bit of depression lately. I haven't been motivated to do anything. Kind of just staying to myself, focusing on. Not a good focus. Focus on being alone and inside my own thoughts. Isolated. Isolation. <clears throat> Notice I've been isolating myself. Forcing myself to put a smile on my face. I feel like I'm snapping out of it now. The thing I've learned about my mental health is that whenever I feel... Uh, these feelings come up a lot of times I gotta let it happen for a couple days and force myself to snap out of it Whew. I do feel much better I feel a lot better it's a beautiful day in Wiley Texas United States good place to run it's about what time is it it's uh 11 20 in the morning 75 degrees my average heart rate on this run my highest was 161 i averaged 131 running outside this is my third time second time here in texas first time was in uh San Diego when I was visiting a friend of mine um, my son just got out of the army so he's going to stay with us till college starts so the treadmill's in his room so it's kind of I kind of wanted to run outside anyway my boy was teasing me I was running on the treadmill but uh, I do like running outside actually it is uh, I knew it would be different challenging it is challenging every little slope that's not a racial slur slope as in up and down sidewalk I got a little, little bit of dog training Malawa German Shepherds still trying to figure out exactly what that is Nice brisk walk. Whoa. <laughs> There's a big giant dog in the back of that truck. I was just kicking back. Obviously an older dog because it just sat there and looked at me like, hey. Didn't wag its tail, didn't growl, didn't do anything. It's trying to stand up. <sighs> Anyway, back to my mental health. Um, yeah, I've learned uh, learning triggers. I used to hear people say the weather. And uh, the older I get, the more and more I realize the weather does have a lot to do with it. It's like a, a natural switch. And I'm talking depression, not depression. Oh, poor me, I want to kill myself. Depression. It's the, kind of depression that uh, it's isolation uh, well, quite frankly people are get on my nerves people in general where you don't even want to go out and check the mail because one of your neighbors might wave high at you that type of depression a little bit of anxiety thrown in there Right. Just gotta keep trugging along. The deepest part of my depression was uh, part too high. It's probably well my whole life, but it's diagnosed in 
mid 20s, mid 2000s. So I'd say probably from probably from 2002 to 2005 was just out of control. Out of control. Got up to 300 pounds. Fuck. My body mass index was over 50%. And uh, <clears throat> I got hurt at work. I was off work for 11 months. Well, yeah, 11 months. And uh, tore a bicep tendon at work. And uh, I literally couldn't do anything. And then I started work conditioning. I was so happy to go somewhere. And I'd get on the treadmill and I'd start working out. Started getting that rush of my endorphins. And uh, started feeling good, started to lose weight. And then I uh, called up a friend of mine, my friend Steve, my friend Steve Cotter. I've been good friends, brothers since high school. So I called him up, I was so excited. Dude, I understand. Now I get it. I feel so much better working out and I'm feeling good. You know, I just gotta get my life in order. My life was still utter chaos. Not as bad as it was, but it was bad. Anyway, so from uh, actually, you know what? I didn't get I didn't get a gym membership probably uh, 2006 2007 and that's when Steve was just getting into kettlebells and I went out to visit and he introduced kettlebells to me I was like oh man did like two minutes of swings and I was like, wow, dude, that gets your heart rate going. Say, like, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, I uh, started working out with those. And it's funny because I fell in that trap of why don't you send me some kettlebells instead of buying them myself. You know, or, you know. Anyway, I ended up hooking up with, uh, I met Lisa Schaefer at one of his workshops he had out here. And uh, she sold them. So I went over to her house and I bought a couple kettlebells and I started working out. And I remember, work out in the morning. I could only do maybe five minutes of cleans, press, push press, you know, all that, swings. Probably five minutes. I'd call up Steve or text him and say, man, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I can't do more than two to five minutes. He's like, no, that's perfect. I said, all right. And then, of course, the minutes started adding up. I could do 15, 20. And then I work for an airline. So I brought kettlebells to work. I figured while I'm waiting for the airplane, or, you know, waiting for my next assignment or whatever, I load and unload airplanes, so I had a lot of, lot of downtime that could be a more use in watching Mori Povich or uh, bullshit with guys. So I started working out in between flights. I was doing snatches. I mean, let's say my flight comes in in a half hour, I'd work out for a half hour, 15 minutes, hour, 45 minutes. You know get the uh, gist of it. Cleans, snatches, press, push press, the whole bit. You know, the seven, uh, is it seven? Seven kettlebell forms. What is it? Clean, press, push press, 
swings, deadlifts, snatch, goddamn, so jerk, seven. So I do all those all day long. And I remember telling, you know, talking to Steve, and he goes, yeah, that's good, uh, 10 minutes of snatch. I go, no, I'm working out all day, dude. I'm, like, doing cleans with 35, 45-pound kettlebells at work. Probably a total of three hours, if you count all the breaks that I had. Probably three hours. I want to say, I can't really say all day, but... Pretty much the first four hours of my shift, I was working out. I'd go work a flight, come back, get some water, work out. Personally, that's how I got good at kettlebells and strength. I noticed my strength was coming up. One of the airplanes came in. I'm like, oh, I've never tried a pull-up. So I did a pull-up. I was like, oh my God, I've never been able to do a pull-up, much less do a couple. So I did a pull-up. And every time an airplane comes in until this day, I'll do a couple pull-ups. You know. And I've noticed uh, my job, you know, you some, yeah, I gotta do a lot of bending and lifting. So I get a bag or piece of freight or whatever, I pick it up and I would jerk it onto the top shelf just like an atlas stone so I've it's definitely benefited me as far as my physical health work wise I mean I was I'd work out lose weight get hurt work out lose weight get hurt it was a revolving door finally I'm just like damn I need to get more serious about this because I'm tired of getting hurt all the time. I was in my early 40s, mid 40s, probably mid 40s. Eh, yeah, about 43. <clears throat> it's kind of a blur right now, but so I started going to Steve's workshops and watching videos. And uh Anyway, I started going to workshops, not just Steve's, but I started going to other uh, fitness workshops, you know, around the area, around wall. I'd go down to Austin. I'm in Dallas, suburb of Dallas, Wiley, Texas. Anyway, uh, my house is way over there. So, you can learn. There's only so much you can learn from videos. I will say that. But first starting out, I'd, I'd suggest watching videos. I'm going to start making some. Start getting my YouTube channel up. I'm excited for the future, what the future holds. I'm going to change careers. I'm in the process of changing careers. It's baby steps. Put out some content. Anyway, um, so I got the. I talked to my doctor about. I got the lamp band. That did good. I dropped down to two thirty. Then it started jacking with my hormones and stuff. And man, I started gaining weight. It was really fucking me up I went back to my doctor and I'm like I don't know what's going on but here's I mean I got up to I got back up to 270 I quit I actually quit working out for a year and um, I think that was 2013 I quit just stopped just you know, I wonder why I gained weight again anyway um, oh my nutrition I I know nothing. I thought I did, but obviously I don't. I'm learning now, that's for sure. But um, anyway, so he said, have you thought about the gastric sleeve? And I felt guilty for even thinking that. And I went, yeah, I have. So we set up and I got the sleeve. Uh, 
almost five and a half years ago. Keeping it off is definitely a, is a half the battle. You know, um, there's a lot of people that get it that don't know what to do. They think, oh, I got bad knees, I can't work out anymore, but I'll have these little hamburgers from McDonald's and a Diet Coke. Like you're, you're gonna gain all that weight back. And most of them have, unfortunately. But, um, you know, you gotta move. I got a, one morning I woke up, I couldn't straighten out my knee. Turns out I got uh, bone spurs, slight meniscus tear and arthritis. So instead of saying I can't work out anymore, I can't run or I can't do that anymore, I contacted uh, Steve Cotter and Mike Muller. And I said, what do you suggest? One leg of deadlifts and lunges, strengthen the knee out. I didn't know you could, it's a slight meniscus tear. I didn't know you could rehab it, but yeah, he explained to me, you gotta get the inner knee strength. So, started doing that and voila. Now once in a while it'll act up on me, but for the most part I could run 45 minutes hour without uh, stopping or knee pain or anything. So that's good. Um, actually about 213, I, 20, I keep saying 213. 2013, I hurt my back. I tore a disc in my back, got arthritis. Again, I contacted my buddy Steve and said, all right, what, uh, what do we do about this? How do I strengthen this out? Because I don't want to ever go through this again. You know, there's a lot of people I work with that they'll get hurt and they'll just, their range of motion in their shoulder, if they hurt their shoulder, will be like this. And they're okay with that. They don't strengthen it out. They're, Wow, I went to that work physical therapy. That was good. And they just stopped. And it's like, so you want me to lift heavy stuff because you can't? No, it doesn't work that way. Here's what I do. That looks like a bat. Well, it's a bat with a weight on it, but yeah. So some people you just can't talk to you about unconventional strength training. You can show them videos of UFC and MMA fighters using it. But they just think it's a novelty. So I kind of just... Uh, Steven, good morning. That won't let me wave to you. Hey, you know what's funny? I never told you. When on these Instagram lives, I thought you had to request to be in the chat. So, so that one day that I requested to get in on your Instagram live, which I would never do, but you kept saying, oh, this Rick Bradley wants to get in on my chat. And I'm like, Am I in? Can he not see me when I type hi, Steve? I didn't know that you're requesting to be in the video with you. So, you know how many people I've done that to? They probably think, Who, who's this bloke trying to get in on my Instagram live? <coughs> Just did a 45 minute run. I should have, uh, I need to buy those whack method. Uh, things that you had. So I do my best to copy it, but I don't know if I'm doing it right or not. Anyway, here I am. Have a good day, Stephen. Yeah, you remember that. That's exactly taking over your chips. Oh, ha, ha, this fucking gay, first of all, you said it's guy, but I know that's obviously a typo. The rest of my chips, now he's trying to take them. That's funny. Ja, ja, ja. Yeah. Funny man, Steven. You funny guy. Stella, you ready, girl? Oh. Hi. I gotta take these guys for you know what. They probably wonder why I didn't take them. Alright, I gotta go. Alright, ciao.
Sajin, Sirena, adios. Be great. Whew.